Okay, it looks like we are live. Just two tries, just like yesterday. So now I'm going to find it and see if the audio is okay. Make sure we don't have audio issues like we had yesterday. Never a dull moment when you're doing live broadcasts. So let's see here. It hasn't shown up yet. Still trying to find the live broadcast, folks. Not showing up. Hmm. I'll try this a different way, I guess. Never happened before where I can't find the broadcast. Oh, there it is. Finally showed up. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Okay, Blue Shirt Buddha's in the house. It sounds like the audio is okay. Let me know. Give me a confirmation if you think the audio is okay. And uh, in which case, we are a few minutes early. Live a few minutes early. Uh, cool deal. I have three of those watches. Oh, there we go. Got a player in the house. Absolutely got a player in the house. So this this came up. I was talking to a, a, a subscriber about this topic, and we've talked about this before. Is there really a perfect one-watch solution? Does it really exist? And it's interesting. He mentioned that years ago he used to wear a sub as a single watch, and we've all watched the, or I think a lot of us have watched the show Bosch, the series where he's a detective and he wears an older Submariner, and it really looks good on wrist, right? Well, those older Submariners, some of them were thinner than the ones nowadays, and the bracelets weren't as heavy either. Right, So you could make a legitimate argument, and of course the case is a much better design than the maxi case. You could make a legitimate argument that an older sub like that, or an older like GMT Master, could be a better all-around, one-watch solution than what they're selling today. Kind of bizarre, if you think about it that way. That, that's, that's kind of interesting. Of course, you wouldn't have the advantages of the newer movement. And there's some other advantages to the newer watch. People talk about the clasp and all that, but and, and how the bracelet is more solid and heavier and all that. But hey, those can be downsides too, right? Those older Oyster bracelets on those older subs, they held up fine. I, I wore watches like that for years. I, I, I had a GMT Master with a Jubilee for years. Uh, back in the day and they held up fine they all held up fine so are the newer watches really better from that standpoint it's an interesting thought i haven't heard a lot of people talk about that aspect of it now if we go to the newer watches the watches that are were in my thumbnail and we're talking about watches that um that you might be able to use every day and of course we've talked about this watch and Steve's going to have one for me to take a look at on Thursday at his event and just a reminder that event is coming up this Thursday at Little Treasury Jewelers there's a link I believe I put a link to littletreasury.com in the show notes if not uh it's littletreasury.com and that event is coming up on Thursday and he's going to have one of these for, he he promises me he's going to have one of these watches to see touch and feel and and if i like it i can lock and load on it that's that gmt master with the 9f movement with that beautiful blue dial that one's about 12 mils thick and it's 39 millimeters case size so that could almost be the perfect size for an all-arounder 
if you think about a heavy, I'm going to call it a heavy use all around her because it's got the screw down crown. It's got all the benefits of a, a heavy use watch, very robust bracelet, very robust design all the way around. Of course, the nine F movement is extremely robust. So I think we should have really two classifications of an all around her watch, two general classifications. One would be a more dressy, not quite as heavy use watch for somebody that is a lawyer, an accountant, somebody that's mainly dressed in a suit and, and working in, a, in an environment where it's not what we would call a heavy use environment, where the watch is going to get a lot of abuse and maybe where the watch might be in the surf a lot, in the water, uh, banged around a lot. In other words, somebody who's not in that situation where it's a lighter use watch and they want something like a Rolex Date 8, for example, or a Datejust with the white gold fluted bezel, that would, that would I think, go into that use case a little more. Of course, a Date 8 is very versatile. You can use that for a lot of things, but if just for somebody that's a lawyer, uh, an accountant, something like that, uh, I think maybe that would be more appropriate. So, uh, let's see here. Blue Shirt Buddha, a newer Rolex bracelets are so much better than the old ones, much more solid. Yes, but they're heavier, and the, and the clasp is bulkier. That can also be a downside for a 24-7, 365 watch. Trust me, you want the least amount of weight possible on that wrist if you're wearing that thing 24-7, 365. That's what I really like about this titanium on this, this diver is it's a bigger watch, but it wears like a smaller, lighter watch because of the titanium. I really wish this watch, that watch right there was titanium. That could probably make it absolutely perfect for a heavy-use sport 24 7 365 piece uh that could really push it push it over that edge speaking of heavy use let's take a look at my chris reeves sabenza again and my olight in titanium my titanium edc light there you go and let's see grand seiko gmt all the way fat panda in the house and lawrence says uh, hello from the uk so so yeah, I th I think that um, it's an interesting question. Now I'm going to throw a real curveball. The Apple Watch. <laughs> Can you imagine? Okay, it's only about ten mils thick, believe it or not. And with this link bracelet, very thin and very trim on the wrist. Let me put this one on. Uh, Zovers, I wish it was automatic. Well, what makes um, what makes this watch so interesting is it's so thin. It's 12 mils thick, and it's so super accurate, which you get with that 9F movement. You're not going to get any of that with the automatic. So there's some big advantages to that to that 9F movement. Okay, so here's here's the Apple Watch, right? And this is this is just to illustrate that you can make a watch that is very trim on the wrist. Look how trim that bracelet is. Look how it hugs the wrist all the way around. See how trim that is all the way around? And it's only 11 mils thick. So this just shows you that from an industrial design standpoint, you can make a watch that's heavy duty. This one's very durable, that hugs the wrist, that can take a lot of abuse. This watch I wore for about two years in heavy use situation, and it still looks great. So if Apple can do it, now of course Apple has a lot of resources, some great industrial design people, so on and so forth. If Apple can do it, why can't other watch manufacturers do it? Okay, and you get to a lot of the super thin watches, and a lot of them don't ha aren't waterproof, they certainly don't have a screw down crown. Uh, they're, they're not really what I would call a heavy use watch. 
the modern Apple Watch, now this is Series 1, but the most recent one, you can sw it's swimmable, right? And by all accounts, it, it, it really holds up in, in, in harsh environments. So it can be done. Watches can be produced to handle extreme use uh, and, and be a good all-around size. So this one I can slip under any of my shirt cuffs. This one I can wear absolutely as a dress watch. So I don't think I'm asking for too much to ask for these manufacturers to figure it out. Figure out how you can make these watches uh, a better all-around solution. Now, from a sports watch standpoint, this is a fantastic watch. Straight up. From a sport watch situation, this is a fantastic watch. But I've said before, for an all-arounder, just the fact that it's 14 mils thick, and it's a 44 mil watch, it's too big to be forced into an all-arounder situation. Now, if you always wear short sleeves, if you live in the tropics like Carlos, and you always wear short sleeves and all that, absolutely you could wear this as an all-arounder. Absolutely. If you don't dress up, if you don't wear your long sleeve shirts and have a shirt cuff that it needs to go under, this, none of this really applies to you if that's your situation. If you dress like I'm dressed right now, year-round, you can wear any watch you want, really, as an all-arounder. Okay? If you don't dress up, that which when you dress up, that you need something trimmer and more elegant to meet that need. That's when things get dicey uh, as far as your watch choice. Okay, so let me see here. Let's... Um, uh, let's take a look. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to, uh, Chrono 2024. And let me know in the chat, Rolex GMT is my perfect all around watch gear. Yeah. A GMT. See the beauty of a GMT is it is thinner than a, than a Submariner. Okay. It's a little trimmer. And the new Pepsi. I think looks gorgeous with the with the um, uh, Jubilee. I think it makes that it's kind of got a maxi case, but not quite as maxi as the sub. So it's more attractive than the sub. The sub is downright ugly that case, that maxi case on that on the sub. But the one on the Pepsi looks pretty good. So we've talked about that. That that could definitely be pushed into an all arounder situation. GSGMT nine F is my perfect all arounder. There you go. I'm going to be looking at it. I'm going to be looking at it on Thursday. So um, then we've also talked about, oh, I've got to log in. Why in the heck it can't just remember me? Come on. Okay. Let's see if I can get in here. Okay, I'm logged in. Let me go to my, uh, my notes here. My, I think they call it your notepad. Yeah, I'll go to my notepad. And I put some of these on the notepad. Okay, so we're going to go through this. Uh, let, uh, well, let's see who's, uh, let's see, SBGN005. Precision is awesome. I only wish it had a sweeping second. Well, yeah, you're not going to get that one. Here's the thing. Perfect watch really just doesn't exist. A watch that does everything we want it to do in every way, shape, and form, I mean, it, they don't make it, unfortunately. So we got to compromise. we got to figure out what's closest to perfect for us because the perfect, perfect, perfect watch doesn't exist. Okay. So here's a GMT two, uh, for 11, There you go. And the Omega, I'm going to say, skip the Omega. Cause I think they're, most of them are too thick. I'm just going to come right out and say that just for now. <laughs> okay. So here's a date just look at this look at the deal on this watch. Here's a date just turnograph 36 mil. Okay, now it doesn't have the bracelet, so that's the downside. That's why it's cheaper. But you can buy that one for three grand. That could be pushed into an all arounder situation. Those are only, I think, what, eleven point seven mils thick or something, or twelve mils thick, somewhere around there. Now that watch is sold, that explorer. 
So let's get that out of there. And here's another turnograph. We've talked about these before. That's a sleeper. Those are those are pretty good value. And of course, there's the date 840 with the black dial with the loom, like Dudley has. That would be a readable watch. A little more legible, you know, because of the black dial and the loom and so forth. Now it's a 40 mil watch, so you'd, you'd want to have a pretty decent sized wrist to sport that, but it's only about 12 mils thick. That's a possibility for an all arounder. I'm just going through this again here, real quick. And now this Pepsi, there's no picture, so let me just take that off of my favorites list. There's a black red 16710. There's an older GMT Master 2. Of course, that could, I wore that same watch for years, but with the Jubilee bracelet. I love the Jubilee bracelet on those. It looks great. Makes it really a nice, versatile all-arounder. And then there's the 116234 Datejust, of course, with the fluted bezel Jubilee bracelet. That's a classic all the way around. Here's one with the blue. Let me get that one off. That's sold. Interesting to see what watches are selling and what watches are not. Uh, there's, of course, a Calatrava. If somebody needs a dress, if somebody wants to sport a dress watch all the time, like I say, if they dress up all the time, a lawyer, something like that. Let's get this Blau Pong out of there. That's sold. Seamaster 300. Uh, I'm going to leave it on there just for now, just for fun. There's another one. I'm going to leave it on there just for now. And now there's the uh, the GMT we're talking about. And it's uh, $3,000. So let me just click on that real quick. See what pictures they've got. So, yeah, the pictures aren't that great. If I get one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some decent pictures of the Dagon thing. Because there's very few good pictures of that watch floating around. And this one's got no image, so let's take that out of there. And of course, we've talked about the Yacht Master. The beauty of this Yacht Master is it's thin. It's 11.7 mils thick. And it's got the great uh, case, the, uh, the, the older style case, not the maxi case. It's got the gorgeous case uh, like the Daytona has. And the only downside to that watch, in my opinion, is the polished center links. And we've talked about this many times. But that would be a, a definite a uh, definite high on the list for an all-arounder. Let's see what. I, let's take a look at the comments again here, real quick. Um, uh, good choice, Craig. Okay, how do you like the Citizen Pro Master Diver? I got to look at some of those watches. I'm gonna when I'm at Steve's, I'm gonna look at some of the Citizen watches. I haven't looked at any of them yet, but when I'm there, I'm gonna take a look at some of those watches because um, a lot of people have brought them up in conversation. Very happy with my new Explorer 2 Polar. I wear it to the office and out and about on the weekends. Today is actually the first day I'm wearing something else since I got it, wearing my Speedy Pro. Explorer 2, yes. Explorer 2 and Polar. Polar. I think, isn't that watch about 12 mils thick too? Isn't that watch nice and trim? Let me know how thick that watch is. Um, that would be a, a definite possibility. Personally, I think I would go with the Yacht Master with the blue dial, personally, before I would go with that one, but it's more money, of course, uh, the Yacht Master. Rolex Yacht Master blue dial, Gary in the house. Explorer 2 Polar is very nice. There you go, Carlos in the house here. 5711 or an Aquanaut as an all-arounder. Uh, not, not an Aquanaut. Um... Uh, let, let me check on 5711. I'm not real familiar. Let me just make sure. Yeah, we're not going to try. We're not going to pick any ugly watches as our all arounder. Oh, no, 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 no. None of these ugly Pateks with the integral bracelet and, and all that nonsense. The Nautiluses, all those. No fly zone. We don't pick ugly watches for our all arounder. Um, no matter how popular they are, no matter how much money people are paying for them, we don't go for the ugly watches. Um, let's see here, uh, 12.4 mils. Yeah, that's, that's close to where you need to be. 
I'd like to see it at 12. Uh, and of course, I haven't been able to really see any real official numbers for the actual thickness of a Date 840. Some people say it's 12 mils. Some say it's like 12.4. I haven't seen any. Oh, Carlos is calling in. Hold on. Let me just answer this, and then I'll put my headset on. Headset. Stand by, Carlos. i got to get my headset. So I'll be able to hear you. Okay. Can, can you turn your camera yeah. the other way? Yeah. So you're horizontal? Oh, okay. Yeah. That way we can see it better when I cut to your feed. Yeah. Hello. How are you? There we go. And Carlos, I was talking about if you're in the tropics and you wear short sleeves all the time, it doesn't really matter how thin your watch is because it's not that, going... That was yeah. Not going under a shirt cuff. I I was looking at that, and that was the reason because I was a, I made the sky because I am wearing a long shirt. Really? <laughs> In the yeah. tropics? Yeah. Why? Why? Perhaps in the place that you will never think of, uh, about. I I will show you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The long sleeve. Yes, and you're in the pool. Oh, so you're doing it really probably for sun protection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, but it's definitely. it's a loose. It's it's not tight, so so it yeah. doesn't. So the the watch will easily go under that if you want to. Yeah, yeah there you yeah. go. There's a Rolex Date Eight. Carlos is in motion. Okay, <laughs> he's making things happen, and uh, and this proves it. This proves that he's in motion. <laughs> It was a, just a kind of joke. Yeah, I, I am uh, this weekend in a Panamanian beach with some friends, and yeah, just just wanted to say hello. Now, is that, that the is joke. that the only watch that you brought with you on the trip? Yes. Okay. Yes, so but this is this beach is like uh, four hours away from Panama City, and mm -hmm. and now. No, and I, yeah, and I don't expect to do something at re something risky like mm -hmm. fishing or something. Basically, I am going to do this thing. Yeah, <laughs> this weekend. There you go. There you go. Um, well, that that could be quite dangerous. You can yeah. lose your watch. I, I, and and uh, blue shirt Buddha says, "Love that date eight forty. <laughs> and uh, Dave Lee says the perfect one size fits all Rolex is the one one six zero zero zero. The blue dial is stunning. Okay, which uh, which model is the one one six zero zero zero? What watch is that? Myself, I don't have a key. Okay, in well, fact, I really don't know the reference of the watches that I have, and mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, but. Uh, yeah, he he might be talking about an, an explorer. Let me let me just pull it up real quick. One one six zero zero zero. I think that, that this one is it's the start of the two three and whatever. No, no idea. Yeah, and I, I know that the explorer end in seventeen or something, but no no idea really. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to pull it up now. Let's see what we can pull up here. One one six zero zero zero. Uh, Oyster Perpetual. I guess it's an Oyster Perpetual. Yeah, oh, that's a fantastic watch. Absolutely. And you can get the Oyster Perpetual. Doesn't it come in like a, uh, it comes in uh, 36 mil. It comes in uh, 39 mil too, right? The Oyster Perpetual? I think so. But anyway, that's a fantastic watch. Let me try to pull one up here while we're live. That's a beautiful scene there, Carlos. Well, it's a <laughs> typical Panamanian beach that, as you can see, is very usually the the only problem that usually Panamanian beaches has is mm -hmm. that usually the the sun is very very dark. And okay. today is quite cloudy the day, but mm -hmm. usually you need to to wear like flip flops or something to go to the to the sea because usually it gets very very hot especially at this time of the year the sun is especially high mm -hmm. i don't know if you are seeing this is a very it's quite famous surf place a lot of okay. people come to this place to surf from 
in fact, I would say around the world, or at least from U.S., it's a okay. place called Playa Venao. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that yeah, watch he was talking about is the Oyster Perpetual, but it has kind of like an explorer-style dial on it. It's really a cool-looking watch, and I'll show it after after I finish talking to you. I'll bring it up on the screen. But yeah, that, that would also be a fantastic watch, that Oyster Perpetual. Because I think they're a little bit thinner because they don't have the date mechanism. So, looking good, Carlos. Show us that okay. date. Show us the date eight one more time. Okay. Okay. Day day underwater. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's the date yeah. eight forty. That's right. It's yeah. a, he's he's in motion. He's actually using these watches, folks. Imagine that. Actually using these watches. All right. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you. Thank and, you for and, calling in. And and just also only to tell, uh, I I saw your the recorded program to yesterday, and yes. I think that Andrew asked about a reference regarding David S W. And the only thing that I can say is that uh, as a dealer, he's great. I purchased this yes. this watch from yes. him. Yes. And he. Not sure about the deal and the price that he told, but, but, but at least in my case, I really, I received an invoice from him. I sent him an international front transfer uh -huh. and I didn't have any problem. He's nice considering that, you know, usually the, usually the, the great dealers, uh -huh. you cannot expect the same, let's say, to have champagne at the place and that kind of thing. Uh -huh. He goes straight to the business, and but he's great. He's great. I, Very good. Regarding the price, I have the same impression that you had on uh, that. Probably there's something that, at least I think that here in Panama, I think that that ki that kind of discount can be get on a uh, on a regular ID. But yeah, 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 yeah. And also be careful, uh, careful with the with the import duties. Exactly. It may be worth to come to pick. Uh, pick the the watch. Nevertheless, you have to manage the duties on your way on the country. That's yeah, that. yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, my friend. Enjoy. <laughs> I, enjoy your day. I didn't want it to be disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I want to respect my viewers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, my yeah. friend. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There you go, Carlos. <laughs> Carlos in action. Yeah, somebody said that that watch is 34 mils, but it looks like it's 36 mils. Let me, let me pull one up here on the screen. We'll take a look. That's what we do here on this show is we take a look. That's all we can do. All right, here's the 116000 Oyster Perpetual. And... Uh, you gotta love that dial. That, that is nice and clean. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. And, and the, neat, the neat thing about this watch is it's got the, it does not have polished center links. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's see about the stats on this puppy. 2018. Uh, let's see. This one's original box and papers. Uh, where does it give the... Oh, thickness is 11.8. Nice. Under 12 mils thick. So it's a 36 mil watch. That is... Uh, that is a nice... A very nice pick. I've added it to my notepad. Very nice pick and a very nice buy. Available right now for fifty-two fifty, folks. I don't know how you could beat that for an all-arounder. If you if you want to go Rolex and you want something really to wear all the time, you can't beat thirty-six mil. Uh, let's see. I'm in Western New York, the opposite of heaven. Turkey vulture. Uh, beautiful Explorer dial. Um, yeah. I love the one one six zero zero zero. You could you could steal it pre owned turkey vulture. Yeah, but I mean even brand new. I mean that's a 
that's <laughs> that's pretty cool. Original box, original papers. So, um, yeah, I think so. How could you beat that? Now it's got it does not have this bracelet here. This is the newer style bracelet, but it does not have a flip lock on it, right? So it's got the one lock on it that you lift up to undo it. And I think it has three micro adjustments. Let me know in the chat if I'm correct on that. If it has uh, three micro adjustments, and I think you have to use a tool to, but you can micro adjust that. Let me know, confirm that in the chat because that would be important that it has that capability. Because uh, I didn't see any half links. So I, my guess is it's got that capability. Um, let's see here. I'm going to refresh this here and see what I can do. Okay. Okay, just wanted to refresh everything here and just make sure I'm up to date on the comments. Okay, Carlos living the dream. Absolutely he is. Uh, not always a dream, honestly. <laughs> well, life throws you some curveballs every once in a while. You just got to be able to hit a curveball. No easy link extension. Yeah, but we don't need that. The easy link extension is... I don't know. I don't think that's very useful, to tell you the truth. The micro adjustments, though, are very important. But that easy link thing, really, it's it's too much of an extension. I mean, if you got it fitting almost right, and then you put that easy link out, it's like a couple of mils. It, I think it makes the watch too loose. Then I, you, I think you need, if it was like half that much, that might make sense. But I don't find, I I saw touch and felt a, a Rolex with the easy link, and I played with it. It didn't seem like to me that like it was that um, useful. It takes two seconds to access the micro adjustment if you own the tool. Very easy. Yeah, so see, that's key, that it has that adjustability. If that OP was white face, would take my fancy more. Uh, okay. I think the blue is gorgeous. Um I picked up my 116000 for 3700 new in Monaco. It's a sweet spot at 36. Absolutely. That's a gorgeous piece. That's a, that's a watch you could really wear the rest of your life. I usually I use the Easy Link every day, Blue Shirt Buddha. How do you use it? Let me know what your use case is on that. What do you how do you use it? They make a black a white, black, very rare, and the blue Explorer dial. Okay. Not sure if blue goes with all out. Oh, excuse me. Bless me. Bless me. Uh, um, blue is pretty versatile. Let me look at the color shade again. <clears throat> I think that would be pretty versatile. I really don't think you'd have that big a problem with that. It's dark enough that uh, I I would not, that would not be a worry of mine. So it looks like it'd be very legible. When you get old like me, that's a thing you worry about. Oh, by the way, so this guy, see, see sometimes you make assumptions <clears throat> and you know the definition of assumption, you make an ass out of you and me, right? In other words, you make an assumption and you're incorrect. So this guy makes a comment on one of my videos. <clears throat> Let's see, I bought my 116000 blue from AD new for 5000 Dealer gave 15% uh, off. Well, there you go. Um... The blue dial changes from black to stunning blue depending on the sunlight, but it covers every occasion being suit under the cuff or sports. Yeah, I agree. I, I Okay, so this guy makes a comment. He says, as I can tell that the crown of your watch is, is, hitting, your, is hitting your wrist because of that spot you have right there. See that spot? Well, 
<laughs> I hate to break the news to him, but that's what's called an age spot. When you get old, I've got these spots all over. I got this thing here. Somebody called that a pimple, right? This one right here, you can barely see it. See the little bump right there? I mean, I've got them all up my arm. It, it, it's sunspots, age spots. I've got this nasty one here, right there, that black thing there. That's permanent. It doesn't come off. I've got moles, you know, all over, and sunspots, a combination of all of the above. I've had little things removed here and there that were like cancer, but not the bad, not melanoma, but, you know, had, had to be removed. So that's what happens when you're in the sun too much and when you get old. Is, 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 is things like that. That's not from the watch hitting my wrist. <laughs> trust, trust me. Because <laughs> I got them all up my arm everywhere. I mean, you know, uh, it is what it is. If any of y'all get old, you'll, you'll know what that's all about. Um, let's see. In the morning and during the day, my wrist expands, so I leave the extension out. At night when I'm home, my wrist shrinks. And I take in the extension. But isn't the extension too much? Doesn't it go from tight to too loose? Seems like it would be a little bit too much. Maybe if it works for you, I mean, okay. See, this one, this extension here, I can extend it just by going like this, right? I just extended it. I can extend it a fair amount. And then I can just click it one, like one millimeter at a time in. Each click's about a millimeter, right? Right there, it's just a very small amount of extension, right? So it, it is, I do use this a lot in the, in the, when it gets humid and hot and I go out and then I come back in the air conditioning. I do use this some, but it's not as, as big an extension when I'm on the, the minimal amount right there, like one click. It's not as much as the easy link. And that's usually enough for me. So that's what I'm, con I'm thinking is what, how you can get by with more of an extension than that and not have it be too loose. But if it's working for you. Um, let's see here. I also fit the Jubilee from my date just to the piece. And then it really comes alive. Oh, okay. All right. I guess the Jubilee would look okay with that. Why not? Um, let's see here. Um, what's your take on uh, spur sparkling CW Essers? I don't know those watches. <laughs> I, um, I don't have any experience with them, so I only comment about things I have experience about. Oh, let's see. I've been looking at Super Jubilees for it. Nice. Okay. Uh, blue shirt Buddha, not for me. Life is too short, turkey volts, to wear a CW. Um, it's a two millimeter extension. Yeah, see, to me, the two mils would be, would be too much. Usually I'm using one mil. But hey, if it works, if it works for you, like I said, um, that would be okay. Hmm. So you think you need two mils when you do that extension thing. That's interesting. Now there are some times when I probably extend this two clicks, but if I start extending it two clicks a lot of the time, I'm going to make the adjustment on the micro adjustment because I have four positions here. And right now I'm, I'm one in from the end. Okay. Uh, so I can go one looser, and then I can go two tighter. I've got four adjustments on the micro adjustments here. This clasp is very useful. People ding this watch because of the clasp, but I have gotten so I really like it. I mean, I really do. Craig, would you buy a Patek Philippe? I would if it was a really classy looking Patek. Absolutely. Let me pull up one that I would buy. I think I have one on my Chrono 24 list here. I think we just showed one. Here we go. Here's one. <clears throat> this is a beauty. That's a beauty. That'd be one example of a Patek I would get. See how it has the nice shape to the case and the nice lugs? That nice shape to those lugs. Nice clean dial. 
configuration. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can get a side view here. Nice thin watch. Now that that doesn't look as good from the side. Interesting. Doesn't even look like it's the same watch. Yeah, that's not even the same watch as 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 this one. They've got their pictures screwed up. So anyway, maybe I wouldn't like that model. But anyway, I'd like an elegant uh, Patek. Not not one of those square wannabe sport watch like Nautiluses and all those things. Those those things are ugly. 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 If I'm going to buy a sport watch, I'm going to buy a real sport watch. Um, let me see if I have another Patek on the list here. Thought I did. A bunch of these watches are sold. I got to get some of these off of the. Got to get some of these off of my watch list here. Here's one. Here's a five two two seven J. Okay, that'd be a good looking puppy. Thirty nine mils. See, that's pretty classy looking. I would probably buy one though without the date. I probably would not buy this model because it's got the date. I'd probably buy a manual wine with no date because I wouldn't be wearing it all the time. If I was wearing it all the time, I would buy an auto wind unit. Um, so to answer your question, yes, I'd buy a Patek if it was elegant. Classic. Let's see here. Once you go glide lock, it's hard to use anything else. Glide lock is is kind of long, though. The whole structure is kind of long, kind of. I don't like the looks of it that much. Um, but it's okay. Like I say, they just don't make the perfect watch. Everything has an issue. So I'm going to talk to the Grand Seiko people. I want them to build a Craig Ship design. Grand Seiko. I can tell them exactly what to build, and it'll be epic. They don't have to build a whole line of watches, Craig Ship watches. They just have to build one. I'm going to tell them exactly what to build to build the perfect watch. And anybody that's there at the event on Thursday, you can be part of this. And, and we're going to tell them exactly what we want them to build for the perfect, the perfect, perfect watch. Let's see here. Um, and everybody, uh, just off the John Deere uh, mowing the yard. What about a vintage Patek Calatrava? Though there you go, absolutely. Yep, our wags. I stopped doing the mowing thing some years back. I had a really nice zero turn uh, grasshopper mower with sixty inch uh, cut deck. It was 60 or 72. Maybe it was 72. Uh, that was a blast um, uh, driving that thing. I'll pull up. A, I'll show you a picture of my uh, my grasshopper that I had. That was that was kind of cool. Let me see if I can find it here. Let's see if I can find it. That'll be the question if I can find it or not. I found it. Yes, I did. I did find it. So that was my grasshopper moa mower. And uh it um you see it had the deck out in front so you could go underneath like the pine trees and things like that real easily. And th that's better than having the deck amidship because then you can't get underneath the pine trees with it, right? This I could go underneath the pine trees and still a zero turn mower very fast it would go about nine miles an hour and cut pretty thick grass and then i had that snow blower attachment for it also back in the day when i used to cut some some grass some acreage here but i don't cut grass anymore we have people that, that do that nowadays that's how we handle that i travel too much to be involved in all of that kind of stuff let's see pet tech will increase prices three to five percent in june okay Archie would approve. Okay. Check out this watch. See what you think. A large. Okay. Let me see what I think here. Opening it in my Google Chrome. I won't be able to share this to you because I'm opening it on the iPad. 
but um, I will look. Oh, it says page not found. I didn't get it. Didn't It didn't come up. Sorry about that. How do I get back? Back here. So no, the page didn't come up. Okay. Um, my second all-arounder, Zenith El Primero, also stunning. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the... I don't think I'd go with the Zenith, but uh, there, a lot of people like them. I just wouldn't go there. Too many good Rolexes and too many good Grand Seikos for me to go to another brand right now. I think for me it would be Grand Seiko, Rolex, or Patek. I think that's the three that that I would put on my wrist. But I'm old fashioned and I don't I don't I'm not that open minded when it comes to other brands. Yeah, forty years I wore Rolexes, right? I didn't go to Grand Seiko easily this transition to grand seiko didn't didn't happen easily it it i had to really be impressed and this watch here really impressed me i mean it is a joy to wear i i can wear this 24 7 365 if i didn't dress and wear shirt cuffs when i retire uh i might this might be my 24 7 365 option then by then my eyes will be even worse and I'll need the legibility. <laughs> this thing is super legible in any lighting situations. I mean, just super legible. And remember, when you go to 40 mils, this is something a lot of people don't think about. When you get a diver like a sub and you go to 40 mils, that bezel takes up a lot of that 40 mils. And so the dial is, is relatively small. I mean, it's about the size of a 36 mil date chest dial, to, to tell you the truth. So, because that bezel is, is bigger, right? So that's something to think about. Royal Oak, no. No, Royal Oak. <laughs> ugly. We're not going to buy the ugly watches. We're not going to do that. We're going to skip on skip the ugly watches. By the way, folks, where's Bitcoin going from here? There's the, uh, my EDC items. Uh, let's see. Bitcoin is is at uh, at about fifty six hundred right now. So, what do you guys think? Is it going to crash again? Are we going to give? Are we going to get one more chance to buy Bitcoin below five thousand dollars? Are we going to be able to buy Bitcoin at like three grand, thirty two hundred, thirty one hundred? What do you guys think? I've got a stop loss in right now on my one Bitcoin that's here on the exchange. I got one Bitcoin here on the exchange right now. And it is, I got a stop in at 5,400. So if Bitcoin goes down to 5,400, that's going to stop out and I'm going to liquidate at 5,400. But the question is, are we going to have a flash crash? Are we going to crash down to like, 3,000 bucks and have a chance to scarf up some cheap Bitcoin. Let me know what you think in the chat. I, and I never thought, I think back to when I first bought Bitcoin. I mean, I remember when I interviewed Adam Meister in the spring of 2017, before the big run-up happened in 2017, I had Adam Meister here in the house. He's, he's an old friend of mine. He's a Bitcoin guy. And I had him in, and my dad interviewed him. My 90-year-old dad interviewed him here, <clears throat> and that's on my channel. The interview's here on my channel. And we were speculating as to whether or not Bitcoin would hit $5,000 in 2020. We were, we were hoping that it would hit 5000 I think it was like at 1200 bucks or something when, I was, when we were interviewing him at the time. And 1200 was high. Think about it. 1200 was a lot of money for Bitcoin. And I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that it's worth five grand right now. I mean, it's just insane. And, and the fact that I'm speculating as to whether or not it will go below five grand again is just insane. I mean, we're not even to 2020 yet. So this is, this is pretty freaking bizarre what's going on with Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> pretty bizarre i'm don't get me wrong i'm happy as can be but actually i would like to acquire more um but i'm 
pretty happy. I got big smiles on my face when Bitcoin's five grand. <laughs> Whoa. Um, let's see. A 39 Explorer is, is all dial. Yeah, see, that's the nice thing. It, it, and, and, that, and that's the other thing about... Um, let me go back to this other, um, this other beauty. See, the nice thing about, about this watch is that bezel's not very wide. It's not as wide as the bezel on a sub, for example. Of course, it doesn't rotate, right? It, it's similar to an Explorer 2 bezel. But uh, it's not as wide. So the dial, even though the watch is a 39 mil watch, the dial is probably the same or bigger than the sub. I'm going to compare them when I see it. Hopefully, I'll be able to compare it. But, but that's an advantage. You got to think about all these little details, folks. All these little details you got to think about. Carlos says, "You know my opinion." Yeah, he thinks he thinks Bitcoin's going to crash and burn. He thinks it's going to go to zero. He thinks it's uh, it's just not going to survive. He may be right. Oops, there goes my microphone. <clears throat> Time will tell the tale on that. I'll put it this way. There are some powerful people that would love to kill Bitcoin. And they've tried many times. Trust me, they've tried many times. Uh, and so far, Bitcoin is laughing at them. That's why it's got the, um, the, uh, the non de plume of honey badger. Uh, okay, blue shirt's got to run. Oh, by the way, the race is later today. The run, run for the roses. Uh, Carlos, we are disappointed you're not coming to the party next week, but Indy is getting ready for you. You will enjoy um, Hosier Hospitality when you get there. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Carlos is in motion. He's always making things happen. So that's how that works. So, folks, any other suggestions? We haven't had that many suggestions, really, uh, for that perfect all-around one watch solution. Let me know what you think. Uh, Craig, looking casual today. Yeah, it's warm today. It's it's kind of humid. There's supposed to be thunderstorms. Uh, I'm, of course, not running the air conditioning because I'm cheap. And so, yeah, I tried to dress comfortable. But, you know, I told Dudley. Dudley, you know, wears like T-shirts and stuff and dresses kind of so-so. And I told him, I said, yeah, you can dress casual. And he, he's in the tropics. He's down there in the south, and it's hot. And I said, you can, you can wear a golf shirt. That's what I'm wearing here. This is just a golf shirt, right? Uh, and, I mean, you can wear something decent and in a casual-type situation. You don't have to dress like a bum just because it's hot and because it's in a casual situation. So... Um, so yeah, when it's hot, I'm gonna I'm not gonna force myself to wear a, a suit and tie, um, uh, you know, and be uncomfortable. I don't know what I'm gonna wear to the party on Thursday yet. It depends on how hot it is. I, I might not wear a coat and tie at, at the party, and it and it won't. As Carlos would said, it won't be because of any disrespect. <laughs> It'll just be I'm trying to be comfortable. And he's going to have a lot of people at that party. That I don't know if his air conditioning, if it's a hot day, you know, his air conditioning might not be able to keep up real well. And so I, I'm not going to assume that the air conditioning is going to keep that place like a meat locker. Remember what I said about assuming something. Um, I love the shirt, Craig. Yeah, this is just a PGA golf shirt. Um, they're, they're okay. They're very comfortable in the hot weather. They're very comfortable nothing really that special but got you see some more in the camera shot because it's got some fine pattern to it but oh boy and hopefully my next camera i get will be able to handle uh the more situation um <clears throat> submariners the ultimate one watch can be worn for any occasion and, and tough as nails colon says yes i agree colon especially like i said the older subs now i wouldn't buy the newer sub with the maxi case that's a no fly zone for me i'm just not going to buy it i think it's just ugly but the older uh subs uh absolutely and and some of them are thinner than they are today they've gotten a little bit thicker over the years they put on some weight like a lot of us have but 
but uh, that's not good when it comes to the watch. Um, it could be 100 degrees out, and I'll still wear a polo shirt. Yeah, well, a polo shirt is designed to be worn in the hot weather. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. Um, yeah. It's over 90 degrees. I'm walking around with no shirt and in boxer briefs. Well, there you go. Colin in the house. He's out there driving the ladies crazy. Um, Keytown, California. How about a nice, light-colored, summer weight suit, Craig? You would look absolutely dapper and fresh. I'm, I do have some suits that are, I have some that are designed to be, you know, summer weight suits. And I've got some uh, silk sport coats and things like that that I could wear. But like I say, if it's hot and you're wearing a shirt and tie, see, that's what I like about wintertime, like fall, winter, all that. It's great for wearing a tie because the tie helps keep you warm. So a lot of people don't think about, right? You close that collar up and you put a tie on, it helps keep you warm and comfortable in the cold weather. It does the opposite in the hot weather. It makes you feel a little bit warm, a little bit uncomfortable. So that's the issue we're dealing with here. Uh, let's see here. Tudor Black Bay, 58, 11.9 inches. I would pass on any Tudors. For me, that'd be a no-fly zone. I'm not going to go the Tudor route. I'm going to buy a Rolex uh, before I'd buy a Tudor. Um, I've not seen anything more elegant than the striped white suit that U.S. senators wear once a day. <laughs> striped white suit. I don't know really what that. What he means by that. <laughs> um, enjoying a beautiful what? Okay. One year I mean with um one year I mean with blue stripes. Okay, not sure what you mean there Carlos, but maybe you've had a couple of those drinks down there so you're um uh, slurring your writing. <laughs> Our wags. I didn't think you want just one watch, minimum of two, one for dress and one for daily activity. Well, yeah, I mean that might be I mean this might be an unrealistic search. Um, for many, many years, I've always rotated the, the day date with either a Submariner or, for the most of the time, a GMT Master. GMT Master 2, and some of the times a date just, but I, I always rotated two watches for many, many years. Uh, and, you know, but... That's probably because I couldn't find the perfect one watch solution. So yes, I've always had a, a, a two watch rotation for the most part, but that's not because it's a it, it's a good solution. It just means that maybe we can't um, we can't find the perfect watch. Uh, Maxi case is ugly. Wash your mouth. Out. Hey, it's the truth. I'm not the only one that says it either. Anybody that wants to look at it objectively will say that the maxi case on the sub is ugly, that they missed the boat there on that one. Craig, is this the time of year when you spend time and you... No, not Florida. No, not now. No, no, Florida's wintertime thing, a wintertime thing. Um, not, not, not this time of the year. No, not a good bet. Anywhere from November to to early April, not even mid-April, but early April. April 1st, you should be heading out of Florida. It gets hot and uncomfortable. Oyster Petrol 39 is a no-brainer. Can't go wrong with that. Well, there you go. Um, I think it's a Southern tradition. Okay. Maxi case and pre-ceramic are both attractive to me. Well, I, I, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but yeah, that maxi case is ugly down California for the price of a black Bay 58 is going for gray market on a bracelet. You could get a lovely one, one, four, two, Oh, or special 34. I prefer the air King salmon dial or spiritual 34. Yeah. I would probably go for a 36 than the 34 personally, but depending on the size of your wrist, a 34 will work. Seersucker's name. Okay. Yeah. Seersucker suits. Yeah. I had a seersucker. I don't have one right now. Um, but absolutely a seersucker. Yes. You're right on target there with that. That's designed to be worn in the hot weather. 
you know, linen suits. Uh, there's various suits that are designed for, for that type of situation. But if you're wearing a shirt and tie, I don't care what suit you're wearing. If you're wearing a shirt and tie and any kind of a suit, you're going to be a little bit uncomfortable if it's hot, I think. Uh, some people, it's like they've had their sweat glands removed. They don't sweat no matter what, right? They can wear a shirt, tie, suit. It can be like 100 degrees with 100% humidity, and they're fine. I don't know how they do it myself, personally. I don't know how they do how they pull that off. They don't have a bead of sweat on them. Uh, I think, let's see. The Black Bay 58 is a more substantial watch than the old Orange Retro Air King. Okay. But I, I'd skip on the... Uh, Tutors. Let's see, Craig, how about Rolex Air King and Sub for rotation? Well, yeah, the Air King is fantastic. But, I mean, really, if you've got an Air King, I don't know that you really need a Sub to rotate in. Personally, I think you could just wear the uh, Air King. I certainly wouldn't buy the Sub with the Maxi case, because I wouldn't wear that. Um, always preferred the Maxi case. Oh, here's somebody that likes the Maxi case. Oh, boy. My goal watch is either the Oyster Spiritual 39 or Oyster Spiritual 36 white dial with both. Okay. I think the 39, 36, it, I think that's really going to depend on your wrist size. And when you try them on, what you really feel is, is looking really good on your wrist. I would rather, if I'm going to err on the side of an all-around watch now we're talking about, not a sport watch, but an all-around watch, I would err on the side of getting a little too small than to get it too big. Because if it's too big, it's too big. It's just not going to work. If it's a little bit too small, like if it's a 36 mil, that's, that's a good size. That was always a good size for a man's watch. All the major Rolex watches, the, the, the uh, date just, the day date, you know, they, they were all 36 mil for many, 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 many years. That's, that's a, a tried and true great size for a watch. Bracelet adjustment is key to comfort. Okay. Um, Craig, what do you think of rubber straps in summertime? I don't like, I don't personally like straps. I don't even like wearing leather straps. I, I had that dress watch with the leather strap and I could never get it at the center right on my wrist and I just didn't do right. I, I, I like bracelets personally, but that's just me. Uh, but yeah, a rubber strap on a dive watch or something like that, I think makes sense. But no, I don't know that I'd put it on anything else. Um, I'm going to gift my brother a white dialed Oyster Perpetual 36. It's his dream watch and he's poor. Okay, well, there you go. But I don't know that a poor person should wear a, a Rolex. I think maybe he should, you should help him get his act together so he can start earning some serious money and, and then step into the Rolex. I think a Rolex is for somebody that, you know, has a pretty heavy cash flow. It's a luxury item. It's not really, I don't think a watch for somebody that's poor, but that's just my opinion. I have a 6.7 inch wrist. I could pull either one off, but the 39 would wear more like a sports watch. Yeah. 6.7 inch, which I'd go with the 36. But that size wrist, personally, that's what I, my recommendation. Would. Thank you, sir. Craig, is that is that cup made in the U.S. of A.? This this glass, I uh, I don't know where it was made. It says you, God bless United States, God bless America on it. But I don't know where it was made. It's 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 old enough though that it's got water spots all over it. It's um. I'm, it probably was made in the USA because that glass is probably 40 years old. Most everything I have is pretty old. <clears throat> so they, a lot of my things are made in the USA just because they're so old. Back when they used to make things in the USA. I'm your long lost brother. Help a brother out. Well, there you go. Are you into Omega Seamaster, the 300 Diver? I think I would go with Rolex or Grand Seiko instead, personally. That'd be my choice. Um, okay, so I am going to um, I'm gonna wrap this up here pretty soon. Let me know if there's any other any other questions or feedback. Uh, I'm the reason for the steel shortage. <laughs> oh boy. See, that's the only thing I'm worried about on this watch is I don't know if I'm going to like the stainless steel. 
to be honest with you. That's the biggest question I have. When I try it on, I'll know how comfortable it feels and all that. See, the thing is, I'm spoiled by this watch. This watch is very comfortable on wrist because of the titanium. And so, like I said, you can't get everything you want. If, if I had my choice, this watch would be made out of titanium. It really would. Uh, that would be my first choice. But I'm going to be have an open mind. I'm going to look at it on Thursday, and we will find out what the deal is. Remember, click subscribe. Click the little bell. And Carlos says, I agree with Craig's opinion. Bad idea to gift a Rolex with maintenance. If you the gift watch nice quartz like a GS... Well, yeah, but I don't even think I would give somebody a, that, that can't afford a good watch, I don't think I'd give them a luxury timepiece. I mean, these, these are luxury timepieces. These are not... Um, the definition of a luxury item is something that you buy with extra money that you don't really need. That's a luxury, right? As somebody that's struggling to make ends meet, they shouldn't be buying luxury items they should be getting their act together so that they can create a bigger income stream maybe find out what they do maybe get them some tools something to help them do what they're doing to help them get on the right track to where they can start earning a, a significant living and then um afford some luxury items a lot of people don't want to work anymore I, true story i'll wrap up with this <clears throat> I walked into town, it's two or three miles to walk into town from here, and I walked into town, and I was going to get a haircut, because the event's on Thursday, I figured I'd go ahead and get a haircut before the event, right? Walk into town, first salon I come to, it's closed. There's two salons and a barber shop in town, that's all there are, right? Second salon I come to closed this is two o'clock in the afternoon on a saturday right okay fine okay so the barber shop i come to closed at one o'clock all three places closed on a saturday now i can understand somebody wanting to take some time off i can understand somebody closing at noon but all three of them all three of them none of them are hungry and want to make some extra money none of them want to stay open until like five o'clock on a saturday and get some extra money in their pocket used to be the day when people stayed open and they were hustling. They were hustling to make a living, to make money. That's why these days, if you want to find a restaurant that's open, you almost have to go to a Chinese restaurant. They're always open, right? A lot of the other restaurants know we're closed on Tuesday, know we're closed on Monday, know we're closed on Sunday, and, and, and we're not open for lunch. You know, I'm, My God, you got you to gotta have a, a slide rule to figure out when they're open. Bizarre. Bizarre. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, maintenance, maintenance is not maintenance is not a factor when going for Rolex. You service if no longer works, which is every twenty years. I agree with that. You don't have to service them. Um, somebody says, um, "Okay, so let me get caught up on this." better to teach a man how to fish because you feed him for a lifetime there you go give him a fish and you feed him for a day there you go i gave a watch to my brother and he really didn't appreciate it he's not a watch person and that's my mistake yeah a lot of people don't care about this stuff um maintenance is not a factor when going for rolex service i already said that uh, that's right you don't have to service them i would teach them how to fish and let them reward themselves with a the rolex absolutely uh, that servicing costs thousand dollars today not cheap um, yeah, you shouldn't have to service these things. If they're running good, just leave them be. Rolex isn't too expensive to service with an independent shop. Yeah, shouldn't have to do that. Um, should run fine. Um, let's see here. Maintenance could be a problem if you're struggling, but you are right, Craig. Not a good idea anyway. Not for a poor person. I'd be more happy to work a Saturday for the cash. <laughs> yeah. How poor is he? <laughs> Uh, there are two barbers in town. First guy has a great haircut. Second guy has a poor haircut. Where would you get your haircut? <laughs> Good point. 
I don't get good haircuts anymore because I don't have much hair left, as you can see. I mean, they'd have to be a real artist to be able to make something decent out of my hair. I mean, there's not much there to work with. And the other problem is when they cut it kind of short, it like sticks out on the side. I mean, it's like it goes every which way it wants to go. So I'm probably not going to get a haircut. I'm probably going to go just like this to the event. I'll go scraggly to the event on Thursday because I don't have time, I don't think, the rest of the week to get it. Tomorrow they're not going to be open. On Sunday, you know they're not going to be open. By the way, tomorrow I'm going to shoot a uh, house burning. They're going to have a controlled burn. One of my clients, uh, Dynamic Automotive, they're opening their fifth location here in the county, and they're, they're building it from the ground up. And the property they bought has a house on it that they're allowing the fire department to burn. They're going to do some practice uh, training with it tomorrow. And I'm going to go and hopefully get some uh, clips there when they do the final big burn, when they burn it to the ground. Uh, that's going to be pretty cool. That's tomorrow. I hope it's rain or shine because they're predicting a little bit of rain. But anyway, my guess is they'll do that rain or shine because after all, fires happen, rain or shine. I buzz my hair instead of going to the barber. Saves me a lot of cash. There we go. Cheetown, California in the house saving money. It's always good to save money. Um, yeah, it does add. It's not cheap. I mean, it's 20 bucks now, including tip, which isn't bad here in this town. You know, it's, it's reasonable. But, I mean, that's still 20 bucks every time you get your hair cut. That's something. All right, folks. We're going to wrap this puppy up. It looks like we've solved all the world's problems once again, and the race is going to be coming up here pretty soon. I guess it's like 7 o'clock or something, 6.30 or something for the race. The race for the roses, the Kentucky Derby. I don't know if any of you all are going to check that out. I don't know if they'll be streaming it or not. If they're not streaming it, I won't be watching it because I don't have regular cable TV. I canceled that 20 years ago. Said no more, not paying cable TV. So that I, I just got rid of that expense for 20 years. So there's that. Um, that's pretty smart, letting the fire part burn down a house for practice. Yep. Uh, cheapest deconstruction ever. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so long, everybody. Our wags. Thanks again for your time, Thomas. Uh, someone could be struggling... Because being a watch fan, yeah, absolutely. Some of these people are. I made a comment. I, I'm going to wrap up with this. I made a comment in one of the forums. I said, this guy showed, I think I mentioned it in the other stream. This guy showed all these watches. And, and you know, which one should I wear today or whatever, you know, all these watches. Some of them were ugly, right? And so he had a Rolex in there. And so I said, hey, wear the Rolex and sell the rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh can you imagine so anyway thank you carlos uh no cable tv no paying for people to pump ads into your yeah you got that right all right we're gonna wrap this puppy up hey click subscribe click the bell the little bell and carlos please come thursday surprise us come to little treasury on thursday that'll be really cool bye bye everybody <laughs>